Hey beauty lovers, welcome back to my channel. As you can see, this is another Halloween look for the month of October. It is a slit throat and I did use liquid latex which is not the most realistic way to go about it. The most realistic way to go about it is third degree and I don't currently have that but I am wanting to get it to learn how to work with it. I will be posting more Halloween videos this October so don't forget to subscribe down below and also like the video if you enjoy it. So yeah, this is a slit throw. If you want to see how I got this, then just go ahead and keep on watching. So we're beginning with Ben Nye's liquid latex. Most people claim this is the best latex. The only problem that I had with it is that it kind of dries down a slight pink tone and it doesn't match my skin, so I'm going to try some more and see if there's a clear one. You're also going to need a shallow container to pour the latex in, some cosmetic wedges to apply it, Tissue paper, you're going to want to separate the two bits because each tissue paper comes with two layers. You're also going to want to remove the textured bits that you see here on the edges. It comes on each side. A blow dryer to quicken the process of drying. Tweezers. Scissors. Make sure that it has a round tip so that you don't cut yourself. Foundations and powders. Anything to get your latex to match your skin. Some brushes. You're going to want a reddish brown eyeshadow that's not too dark. This is from the Modern Renaissance palette, Red Ochre, or you can use Makeup Geeks Bitten. You're going to want some cream paints. You can also use water activated paints or alcohol paints, which are the most realistic because they're more translucent. I'm going to be using the red and brown shade. Some liquid blood and then a more thick blood. You're also going to want a stipple sponge to kind of get a messy blood look. I'm beginning by applying this headband because if the liquid latex gets in your hair, it'll be a mess to take out. You're going to want to pour the liquid latex in. My neck is a little bit stained and irritated because I had tried this look right beforehand, so I had peeled it and it's also a little bit stained from the color. Don't mind that, but I wouldn't recommend it. So like I said earlier, you're going to remove those textured bits. And I like to get my piece ready. For applying the latex, so I like to measure it out and see what I'm going to want and just cut it up to the size that you need. And yes, you do have to make this gorgeous face to figure out where there's less lines and movement on the neck because if you apply liquid latex in places with a lot of folds or movement, it will loosen up quicker or even peel up, which you do not want. So I was very focused on getting this liquid latex as smooth as possible because I wanted it to look as realistic as possible because most people I see doing this, uh, there's a very clear line of where the liquid latex ends and where the skin begins. So I was applying a very thin layer and I realized it was drying too quickly and I needed a thicker layer. So now I'm building it up a second time and you'll see me apply it a third time. I wouldn't recommend that because as you can see, I'm kind of peeling up the latex underneath and you can see that line. I would recommend going in with an initial thick layer and just blend the edges. The key to making this look as seamless as possible is to blend the edges, so make sure you're blending the edges and not just leaving a stark line. And in the end, you want to smooth all of that out, even in the center. And I'm applying the tissue paper, and I like to start in the center because you want to get this as smooth as you can. And I like to work very slowly outwardly. It's not going to be perfectly flat just because of the slight texture underneath. You want to do the best that you can to get it smooth. So now I like to hold on to the bits that are sticking on to the liquid latex, and I peel up any of the excess and the jagged edges are great. You do not want a stark line showing where the liquid latex begins and your skin ends. The jagged edges will end up helping us in the long run to make it look more realistic. So you just want to peel off all of the bits that are hanging off that aren't stuck to the liquid latex. With every layer of tissue paper that you apply, you want to apply the initial layer of liquid latex to make it stick on. And then you also want to seal it. So that's what I'm doing here. And you want to be very careful with this tissue paper to not peel it up. So you want to go downwards on the bottom, upwards on the top, and then to the side on the side. So basically applying the liquid latex outwardly. And then you want to use a blow dryer to quicken up the process. Because once you combine the tissue paper with liquid latex, it becomes thicker, especially with each layer. So you want to blow dry it. I'm just doing the same thing all over again three more times. So I did a total of four layers.
I mixed my foundations to try to match the liquid latex to my skin. You want to concentrate on the edges since the middle of the wound will have all the blood and we're going to end up applying a bit of pinky red so that it looks irritated anyway. So then I applied some powder to take away the stickiness and also to make it blend with my skin a little bit better. I needed it a little lighter. The bad thing about this latex is that it's pink but it's also darker than my skin tone so I needed to match it and lighten it. I'm using tweezers to pull up at the latex so that I'm able to get my brush in there. I'm using this brush to kind of loosen that area up so that I'm able to go in with the scissors to cut it. Now I would not recommend you to do what I'm doing right here which is being a little bit too rough and it's right near the edge of the tissue and latex. So just be careful as you're doing this step to not peel up the liquid latex and tissue. So I'm using the brush underneath so that I make sure I don't cut myself. As always, be very careful when using sharp objects, especially scissors. I used these scissors which had a round tip at the edge like I showed you in the beginning, just to ensure that I was not going to cut myself. For this cutting process, I would recommend for you to get the scissors further in so that you're able to cut in one or two strokes, because if not, you're going to get these jagged edges which don't make it look realistic, but I end up Fixing that and I cut off any edges that I don't like. I'm also stretching out this liquid latex a bit to kind of give it that flabby skin-like thing. I might have stretched it out a little bit too much, but again I end up cutting and fixing it a little bit more anyway. I wanted it a little bit more open, so I ended up cutting the top a bit just so that it's more of my skin underneath is exposed, which will end up being the wound. I'm using this red and brown cream paint to fill it in. Remember that I'm a beginner at this, but one thing I do see people doing a lot is using a very bright red, which is not realistic. Uh, even this isn't the most realistic, because technically our skin underneath is kind of like a lighter pink. So now I'm using this ready brown shade to kind of give that irritated skin look around it. It is the shade Red Ochre from Modern Renaissance palette. You do not need that palette, just any sort of darker ready brown shade. And I'm grabbing my powder brush to kind of just blend the edges. I'm applying a little bit more of the cream color then mixing in a little bit more brown. Just kind of wanted it a little bit more darker. And now I'm using my Thicker Blood which is Graftopian's Blood Gel to kind of make it look bloody in there but also give texture. Inserting these little bits which I achieved by putting liquid latex on a flat surface and then letting it dry a little bit and kind of just peeling it up. I think that these pieces were a little bit too thick and they were not sticking well to the blood. I also thought that they were looking intestine like so I didn't like them and I ended up taking them out later. If you want to build up texture I would recommend using liquid latex and tissue paper inside of there as well. Now I'm using the stipple brush and my Ben Nye Stage Blood, which is more of a liquidy blood. Kind of just stippling around the edges. Don't go crazy with this because then you ruin all the work that you did by covering it up with blood. So I'm just kind of making it look more messy. Now we're going in with the same blood, but I'm dripping it off of this brush. Now this kept happening to me where I was applying the blood slightly over the, the edges of the liquid latex and it kept jumping down so I would recommend applying the blood slightly below the edges of the liquid latex so that they drip nicely. Just apply as much blood as you'd like and kind of mess it up. And here I'm just going in to all of the edges with some more blood so that it looks bloody in all angles. And now you can see me taking these bits out because I did not like them. So here is the final result. I really enjoyed creating this look. It was a little bit of a challenge for me since it is my first time trying anything like this special effects related. 
I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, go ahead and click the like button down below. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell so that you never miss any of my uploads. You can also follow me on my Instagram, Beauty Set Ulisa, where I post much more looks and looks that will be on my channel before I even upload them on YouTube. I'll leave the link down below for my Instagram. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you in the next one. My Instagram, Beauty Set Ulisa, where I post...